Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Sarah Zarnomsky. Here's your news now. The Philadelphia Zoo gets a little creepy for the next two weekends in celebration of its annual Boo at the Zoo event from October 19th to the 20th and October 26th to the 27th. While visiting the zoo's animals and attractions, visitors can get in the spooky spirit by strolling the paths of the zoo in a costume parade. For more information, visit www.philadelphiazoo.org. Know anyone interested in enrolling at Cabrini College? This weekend, Saturday, October 19th, is Cabrini College's first fall open house. For registration, visit www.cabrini.edu. Fair Trade ensures that all workers are treated fairly when they make their products. Cabrini had its annual volleyball tournament to promote Fair Trade. Let's check in with Greg for the latest. The Fair Trade volleyball tournament started off with a bang, with students and faculty coming out to show their support in making Cabrini a Fair Trade college. This is my first year organizing the volleyball tournament, and this is special about this year is we're also going for university status for Fair Trade. Um, so part of this is obviously to bring awareness for students and also to give them an opportunity to participate in an event that's actually held on many campuses throughout this month to promote fair trade. So the difference between volleyball and volleyball are in general the rules are the same. Um, the one main difference is you can hit it off of the walls when you play the ball and really that's it. I mean the, the rest of the rules are pretty much the same. It was fun. I had a lot of fun. I was playing with uh, some new friends this year. so. It was really cool to, to actually do something outside of you know schoolwork and stuff, and we had a great time. We went to the semifinals. It was it was great, but we lost ultimately in the end. But I would definitely do it again next year just for the chance of possibly winning it. I mean, this is I think the second kind of fair trade volleyball competition I uh, have participated in. Last year we got to the final. This year we got to the semi-final so it's always good but um, I think every year this is the only exercise that I get so uh, right now my legs are kind of hurting and I'm kind of regretting the fact that I played but um, I'm sure um, when the pain wears off in a couple of months I'll feel great. My thoughts on using volleyball as a, volleyball as a promotion for fair trade is it was a great idea um, they should do more things like in collaboration with sports and good causes so to see volleyball um, promote fair trade was awesome. There was uh, banana splits after the game and people got together and they talked about fair trade. We started off like doing a fair trade pledge and the pledge was really important to get the idea of like what fair trade is all about and you know promoting buying being better buyers on like what we're like what products we're getting so that when we go and we buy our products that it's going towards stopping like human trafficking and stopping you know, unfair labor practices and like sweatshops and stuff like that. It sounds like the event was a great success and everyone had an awesome time participating in the Fair Trade Volleyball Tournament. I'm Greg Smith, on location, for location. Now back to the news desk. That was your trip around the block. So Kevin, what's new with sports this week? Well, it's Dallas week for the Eagles, so it's a rivalry that's renewed and there's a lot of excitement for Sunday's game, so let's take a look. Nick Foles made the most of his first start of the season. His three touchdown passes and rushing touchdown led the Eagles to their second straight win, a 31-20 victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His performance helped him take home NFC Offensive Player of the Week honors for Week 6. Still deadlocked in a tie for first place in the NFC East, the Eagles host the Cowboys in a Week 7 match on Sunday to break the tie between the two 3-3 three three teams. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. Cabrini women's soccer continued their dominance of conference play with a 7-0 win over Keystone College on Saturday. Sophomore Caitlin Cooper posted a hat trick in the win, which helped move the Lady Cavs into a tie for second in the CSAC standings. The men's team saw their six-game win streak come to an end with a 1-0 loss to Centenary College on Saturday. Despite the loss, they still sit in a tie for third place in the CSAC standings. The Flyers fell for the third straight game with a 3-2 loss to the Vancouver Canucks on Tuesday. The Flyers sit at 1-6-0 on the season following the loss. They next face the Pittsburgh Penguins in the Battle of Pennsylvania on Thursday before getting a week off. That's all for this week. Tune in next week for a recap of the Eagles' battle with the Cowboys, as well as an update on Cabrini Sports. Now here's Sarah with your trip across the nation. According to the developing story on CNN, the House and Senate have come to an agreement. 
This agreement will end the federal government shutdown and will avoid the U.S. to default. There has been no announcement on what the agreement is or how the House and Senate came to the agreement, but both chambers now need to take special steps to get the legislation passed before Thursday. According to the New York Times, dentists and doctor's offices, hearing aid centers, and pain clinics have begun an alliance with American Finance. This means that professionals are now stressing to use a credit card issued by the provider's office instead of using their insurance. This is so that patients that need costly procedures are able to get it done instead of turning it down because they can't afford it. There is no initial charge of interest, but if you miss a payment or do not pay off the debt by the deadline, interest rates skyrocket. In California, Ron Hubbard built his own survival shelter and has also made it into a business. He builds some 20 feet underground, and you can find everything you would find in an above ground home in them, including luxury bedrooms, big screen TVs, game rooms, and even an underground pool. He mainly started building the shelters for safety, since there are many recent threats about an economic crash, terrorism, and nuclear fallout. He says he hopes he never has to use them during a crisis, but right now they make great guest houses. Lauren Spires takes us around town and shows us some of the popular bars and restaurants for upper upperclassmen to hang out with their friends. Hey, it's Lauren Spires on location for location. Let's go check out the local bars that the upperclassmen can enjoy. Lauren on location for location here at the Fox and Hound in King of Prussia, PA, right next to the mall, about five minutes away from Cabrini's campus. Ferries, like during the day we'll have businessmen, but usually at night it's definitely a college bar for people, especially from Cabrini, to come here as well as um, a bunch of other schools in the local area. Um, it's a good time. We have a DJ that comes in at 10. We clear off the stage. It's like a whole dance area. And it's a good time. It's more of like a, it's just like a fun atmosphere. Everyone's having a good time. Everyone's smiling. They're all talking to each other. We're all dancing. So, I mean, it's a really good time. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Jack Foley. I'm here to talk to you about JD McGillicuddy's in downtown Wayne. Just want to run through our weekly specials in case you guys might be interested in coming by and seeing us. On Tuesdays, we do an open mic night. Wednesday nights, we do Quizzo. Thursday nights, you can get all you can eat crab for $24.95. On Sundays, we have the NFL ticket. Um, so we have 30 screens around the bar. You can catch any game that's on because we provide all games. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So we'd like you to come by. Come, come see us in downtown Wayne. I like going to JD McCullough right around the corner. Uh, a lot of my friends and I go for happy hour. Wednesday nights are great because you buy a pitcher of beer, you get 10 free wings. Kelly's is a uh, all-service environment. We get a good business crowd during the day for lunch. We get a lot of families in for the night times, you know, until about 8 or 9 o'clock. And then after 10 o'clock, you know, it turns into a little bit of a club. Um, we get all the college students out generally Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and we get a good sports crowd on Sundays. Uh, everyone's really close proximity wise, so it's not, there's no need for a car. Um, we don't have, provide a parking lot for that reason, but for the, you know, the families that come in during the afternoons and the evenings, there is parking in the area. But no, we don't like students showing up with car keys in their hands. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the tour of the local bars surrounding Cabrini's campus. Always remember to drink responsibly and to always plan a safe ride home. Now back to the news desk. And that was your trip across the nation. So what's going on in entertainment this week? Well, there's some exciting news about Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, so let's take a look. Now this will be refreshing. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler are returning to host the 70th and 71st annual Golden Globe Awards in 2014 and 2015. Hollywood Foreign Press Association President Theo Kingma said, the return ensures that the Golden Globes will be once again the biggest, best, and most entertaining award celebration of the year. Faye and Polar have great chemistry, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how funny they will be hosting together again. Are Jennifer Lopez and two-year boyfriend Casper Smart heading for a split? 
an insider announced that the couple has hit a rough patch and a breakup may be imminent. Those close to JLo said that they would be surprised if Jennifer and Casper's relationship lasts. However, reps for Lopez and Smart have not responded to requests for comment. On Saturday, October 12th, Universal Pictures announced that Charlie Hunnam will no longer play the role for Christian Grey in the upcoming 2014 Fifty Shades of Grey film. Sources say that filmmakers of Fifty Shades of Grey and Charlie Hunnam have agreed to find another male lead due to Hunnam's immersive TV schedule not letting him prepare well for the film. Who do you want to replace Charlie Hunnam as Christian Grey? Tweet us at Location News. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's check in with Nicole for your news around the world. Iran and six world powers met on Tuesday in Geneva for the first of two days of talks about Iran's nuclear ambitions. Talks conducted amid a spirit of new optimism since President Hassan Rouhani took office. Iran, which wants the six powers to recognize what it says is the peaceful nature of its nuclear energy pursuits, laid out confidential proposals in the morning. The talks bring together Iran's representatives with those from the United States, Russia, China, France, and Britain, all countries with permanent seats on the UN Security Council, plus Germany. A new report by risk analysis from Maplecroft, which ranks 197 countries, identifies Eritrea, Somalia, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and Myanmar as the top four places where child labor is most prevalent. Countries with high poverty rates are due to the need for children to supplement their family income. But economically important countries like China, India, Russia, and Brazil were also found to have extreme risks because child labor laws are often poorly enforced. A magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck the central Philippines on Tuesday, leaving at least 99 people dead and 276 more injured, and rattling many who were celebrating a religious holiday. The quake, which struck early in the morning, crumbled a number of buildings and sent panicked people streaming into the streets, witnesses said. Most of those killed were hit by falling rubble, the agency reported. So far, nearly 2.9 million people from 560,000 families have been affected. Jenna Rose de Giacomo sat down with alumni Nick Golden on Bless Your Heart, where he talked about his journey from an undergraduate student at Cabrini to an employee here at Cabrini. Let's check in with Jenna Rose to hear more about Nick's story. Well, hello, Cabrini, and welcome to yet another episode of Bless Your Heart with Jenna Rose de Giacomo. I'm Jenna Rose de Giacomo, and on today's episode, I have the lovely Nick here today, who will be talking about his new job here at Cabrini and his experiences at graduate school and everything else. Let's get to talking, shall we? Nicholas, <laughs> what's been up? What's been going on in the life of you? It's been, it's been uh, pretty crazy awesome last couple months. Um, got done with grad school two months ago. I was in Washington, D.C., uh, American University. Awesome program I was in. It was only a year. Uh, yeah, so I did a master's program in, in 12 months rather than like a year and a half or two years, which was awesome. Well, bless your heart, Nicholas. Look yeah. at you go. Stop. And now you're back at Cabrini. Tell me about this. How the heck did you get back into yeah. here? So um, I finished up grad school like two, two months ago, started applying uh, for jobs. And I, I applied schools in, I want to do higher education first okay. off. So um, I applied to schools in D.C., uh, Philly, and um, home, at home, where yeah. I'm from, Allentown, Why Pennsylvania. Not? But anyway, I saw this job at Cabrini, applied to it, and uh, it kind of it fit me perfectly. I was like, this is, a, this is a great position. So I applied, came in for two interviews, and uh, now I'm a coordinator of alumni engagement and annual giving. And what does that job entail, Nick? That's okay. a whole lot of words put into one yeah, position. I know. So it's, um, we work in fundraising. That's kind of what we're doing. Oh, but cool. That's but awesome. what we want to do is coordinate with alumni um, and making sure that they kind of stay in touch with the school. What's happening at Cabrini? Uh, what events are going on? We have a lot of events that we do specifically for um, alumni. The end all, keeping those connections and then hoping that um, alumni down the road decide that they want to give back to the school that helped them and gave them their education. Did you learn anything from the Cabrizi? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, for the most, definitely my writing with journalism. Nice. Um, 
I think radio definitely helped me with, uh, you know, my public speaking, oh, uh, social media. Um, a lot of stuff I learned from Dr. Zurich and social media was um, was huge. And that's a lot, I really feel like I gained a lot more um, experience professionally because I, I did that for my work. And you know what I mean? So altogether, I think I brought a lot of the skills from Cabrini. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. You're too much. You're too much. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Bless your heart. Well, Cabrini, this has been an extraordinary opportunity that I got to interview the infamous Nick Goulden. <laughs> Bless your heart, Cabrini. Until next time, I am Jen Rose Giacomo. Oh, yeah. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Nicole Capizzi. And I'm Sarah Zarnomsky. Make sure you stay up to date with us throughout the week by following our social media platforms. Simply search Location News. Have a wonderful week, Cabrini.